Good morning all. Uh, today we are going to work on taking apart the bucket cylinder on our Massey Ferguson 40B with the uh, 54A backhoe attachment. Uh, the cylinder part number that we're working on is 1605176M92. Now unfortunately I started filming this or I started working on this before I started filming it. Uh, truth be told, I get sick of dealing with my GoPros and I finally ended up just up, and that's kind of why I haven't really filmed much lately. Um, so I finally bought a new camera and microphone set, so hopefully that will make the content a little better. Uh, so I started after I got the gland nut and the rod off, uh, but we'll do, I've got, I don't know, half a dozen other cylinders to go on this machine. Uh, so I'll kind of show you that process as we go through it, but this is rebuilding this particular cylinder. This is the first time I've ever rebuilt a hydraulic cylinder. This is the biggest machine that I own, that I've ever owned. Um, it is circa, I don't know, 1960s, 1970s. And I bought it for another project, which we'll talk about in another video. Today, we're gonna rebuild the uh, hydraulic cylinder for my 60s, 70s vintage Massey Ferguson 40B. Um, I've got it apart already. Uh, I've got the, this is the rod here. This came out of the cylinder. I left the cylinder on the tractor because I don't have a way to pin. I don't have a way to pin stuff on my bench to, uh, you know, break bolts and things free. So I left the cylinder on the tractor itself. This is the rod. Um, this is the nut that holds it all together. This is your pist. I believe your piston, and it sits on the end of the rod like this. The nut goes on here, and then your gland nut goes on like this. This is what holds everything into uh, the cylinder. This is a two and nine sixteenths nut, and it is on the end of that uh, rod really, really good. It's a nylock type nut because I was nylon uh, in here. The camera will pick up on that. Um, I ended up taking the rod and putting this end back on the tractor or the machine and pinning it, and then I took a <clears throat> breaker bar and a cheater pipe and I broke it free. My three and, three and a quarter drive Milwaukee Impact didn't want to touch it. Um, so anyway, the first thing that we need to do here, this cylinder, the part number for this cylinder, by the way, is, uh, let me see here, I'm looking on my notes, it's 1650176M92, and it is considered the long dipper. Um, and the part number that I have for the seal kit is 1607677M91. And I got this from eBay. Came from, came from JL McBride Sales. I'll post links and stuff in the description, but that's the kit. So before we can do this, we wanna make sure everything is clean. Um, keep in mind, this is the first time I've ever rebuilt one of these. You've got seals in here, um, or this, I think this is one, one or two seals in here. And then you've got a bunch of seals out here. These should be fairly straightforward, I think. I'm not too, I don't think I'm too concerned about rebuilding the piston itself. Uh, but in here, you can see it is, there's not much, I don't know if the camera will pick up on it, there's not much left of the seals, which is why it was leaking pretty heavily. Um, this is, I believe, your wiper seal here. So it wipes all the oil off the rod as the, as the rod comes back into the cylinder. And you really want to be cleanly, so we're going to go through, and I'm just going to take a, a pick and probably a brush, like a, like a scrub brush, and knock all the loose stuff off. And then I will likely put it into some kind of either like brake clean or degreaser and try and scrub it before I even take it apart so I can see what I'm working with. So that's where we're at on this. Um, once I get this back together, I've got like five or six more cylinders to do. Just take a little scrub brush like this, and I'm just going to knock as much of the loose stuff out of here as possible before I try and clean it up. Um, if I had a parts washer, this would probably be perfect for it. But you can see all the crud coming out of there. Because you want this to go back together clean. And you can have people rebuild these. I looked at that. Uh, but I ended up buying, I think, all the tools I need to do it. Um, and that's one thing that I ran into with this machine is it is a big machine 
and it's bigger than what I have had in the past. Uh, so, uh, you know, bigger machine, bigger tools. So I had to kind of build up some of my arsenal a little bit to be able to do this. So I went and bought, so if you're gonna do this yourself, you'll wanna buy, I bought a three quarter inch drive torque wrench, a three quarter inch impact, and a bunch of sockets so that I can do this. And then I also went to Tractor Supply and bought a, a socket set and a three quarter inch drive ratchet. So the other issue I have is I don't have another one of these to look at. So I kinda, I do have the service manual I can go pull from. The seal is all coming apart. I'm just, I don't know if the camera will pick up on it, but there's a, there's a rubber O-ring in here and I'm just, there's just so much debris. I was just trying to get some of it out before I started cleaning it in my bucket over there. All right, so on the bottom here is this rubber O-ring. And that is, you know what, I'm just gonna take it out. So that's on the bottom inside this gland nut. I have a feeling there's another piece that's supposed to be here, but it's so deteriorated. Um, I think that's what I'm pulling apart here is, is oh yeah, this, yep. This is all coming apart, so the seal that was here in there with that O-ring has deteriorated. And I'm gonna probably have to go look at my service manual and yeah, it's not even gonna come out in one piece. And I'll have to look and see what, uh, you know, what order they need to go in. But yeah, it's just big chunks of this stuff coming out right there. And I'm not even putting a lot of pressure on it. And then there's also a tool to kind of, and I bought it, I'll show you, uh, to wrap these, you know, they kind of wraps them up so that you can put the um, seal in without having to bend it. Now this, this external seal, this wiper seal here, I may have to go get a uh, seal puller. I don't know if it'll pop out. Let me see. Just gently, you don't wanna, you don't wanna, definitely don't wanna damage. I can't get another one of these, so. Let's see. And it's in there pretty good. All right, well, I think I got out as much as I can. I think the only, oh, there's still a big hunk right there. And given the age of the machine, some of the other cylinders have definitely been rebuilt. Um, but this one looks like it might be, it might have been original. I'm not sure. I can't tell. But that channel is clear other than just some loose debris, which we'll clean up. And then I've just got to pull this wiper seal out and I've got to pull this O-ring should be I'm just using a pick here. So there's actually, is there a set? Yeah, there's a second seal. So there's a, thinner outer uh, seal here, and then there's an O-ring. So we'll pull the O-ring off here first. There you go. There you go. Uh, having a little set of picks is helpful for this. Oops, I stabbed myself with it. There we go. So we'll lay that over there. And I've got to figure out how this guy comes off. I think it separates. Oh, it might be rubber too. There we go. So same way. There we go. All right. So that goes there like that. You can see that off camera, so. Got your gland nut positioned like this. The thinner ring goes towards the threads and the O-ring goes towards um, the cylinder body. So I think the only thing left on this to pull out is this wiper seal here and then to clean it all up. Uh, so I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's, I guess, yeah, we'll start on this. I'm gonna do one piece at a time because I, like I said, I haven't done one of these before so I don't wanna get too carried away. You can see this is what's left of the seal that was in there. <laughs> 
I had to do a little troubleshooting off camera. So in here was a rubber seal, the scraper um, that scrapes all the oil off the rod, right? And the new one, as you can see here, is full plastic or nylon or whatever it is. Uh, and you know what? It actually has a part number of 606-43647. It is made by Halite or Halite, H-A-L-L-I-T-E. And it is a three by two and a half by three eighths. So that is the new, and I've got to make sure everything, you want to make sure everything's real clean when you put these together. Uh, I couldn't get this out no matter what I did. And so I ended up putting a little heat to it to try and soften the rubber so I could pull it out, which you can see that's what's left. But then I noticed as I was cleaning stuff up here, the original one had a metal ring here. And so I just took gently, I took a small screwdriver and a little brass hammer and I was able to get it in between here. And now I'm gonna work on getting the rest of this ring out so I can get the thing cleaned up and uh, get it out, get it out and get the, the rest of this cleaned up here. And I don't wanna mar the surface of the gland nut, so I'm trying to be careful on how I do this. Now, normally if this was a part that I didn't, not, not that I didn't care about, but if I could get another one of these and I wasn't so concerned about damaging it, I probably would take my Dremel and just cut it and then chip it out. But where I can't just go down the junkyard and get another one of these gland nuts or go to the parts store and get one, we've got to be very, very careful with it. So I'm just trying to get this to bend a little bit more so I can pry it out of there. I ended up getting it out. Um, little screwdriver, brass hammer. I did end up taking the Dremel and just, the camera won't focus, and just notched it a little bit. And thankfully the metal in this is much weaker and or softer than the gland nut itself. So once I notched it and I just worked it with a couple of different screwdrivers um, without, you know, I was trying to be careful not to mar the mating surface here. Uh, I was able to pop it out, and once I got underneath it, it uh, came out. Try and keep the bench clear over here. I'll have to get the vacuum out and suck some of this loose stuff up. Um, I'm going to, before we clean this up any further with any degreaser, I'm just going to try and get some of this stuff off of here, or the big, you know, continue knocking off the big stuff. That way. Um, you know, it doesn't get in the bucket and I can try and keep it a little cleaner. I'm just using a pick to get any of the big heavy stuff off of it. Uh, like I said, that way when we clean it, it isn't too bad. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's bits of gasket. Overall, I mean, it looks pretty good. I don't see any like wear marks or anything crazy, so. So first, I'm just gonna degrease it a little bit with, well, of course my brake clean can is Almost out. Let's go see if I got another one. This one has nothing left in it. I'm just going to use brake clean to knock the heavy stuff off, or well, what's left of the heavy stuff. I had to go look at my factory service manual for this machine. So the piston or the cylinder that we're working on is the 1605176M92. And 
This is the seal that we just removed, uh, the wiper seal. And underneath it, number three, is the bearing seal. So that's what kind of what I thought there was something that was supposed to go under there. That seal was not there when I took the, and hopefully this is showing up on camera okay, this is where I got my books a little uh, dark. Um, this seal was one of those ones that was disintegrated. Um, so that's the bearing seal. So we've got to figure out which one in my kit goes under there, then we can put this seal back in place and start to put the rest of it back together. So I, I'm pretty comfortable, I think, with the piston itself. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. I found all those. I found the O-rings for the outside. So I, I think we're in the process. I've got to take, finish taking this piston apart and um, get it all cleaned so that I can start putting it back together. I think that's gonna be my next step is to get this apart. We got our gland nut apart. I cleaned all that up. Um, that's pretty much ready to go back together. I am now taking the piston apart, or this is the this is what they call the piston. And so you have a bunch of different seals here. I think I've identified them in the kit. So I'm just going to basically take my pick and pop them off. It's going to go like that. There's the top one. These guys are going to be Gotta figure out how to get these guys off. I'm assuming these have some kind of groove in them too. Although I haven't seen one on this one yet. All right, well, I'll come back to those. Um, so in here, there's a rubber O-ring in the middle, and then there's two outer, uh, thinner seals. So I'm gonna pull the O-ring in the middle out first. There we go, so that's out. Put that there. Now I can get the outer ring there. So it's basically gonna make an O-ring sandwich. Just like that. Try to keep the parts somewhat organized so that, um, you know, when I go put this back together, we know where things go. Yeah, so looking at the replacements, these should have these should have some kind of a split in them to take them off just like the big ones did. But I am not seeing it. And again, this is not something you can just go down the junkyard and pick a part off of. Uh, now you might be able to get a whole new cylinder, but I don't really want to do that. So we want to be careful not to damage anything. Oh, there we go. I see it on this one here. There we go. Got to really look for it. This machine's really old, so... All right. There we go. There's one. That is the one that faces towards the uh, cylinder itself, the rod itself. Now that we got one out, I should be able to find the other two. Separate them a little bit. All right, there's the, the other unit, or the other separation point. There we go. Is the other one off. Now we just got this last one here and then I can clean this up and we can put it back together. Does this one have a, no you know what this one does not have a separation piece in it looking at the kit. So how do you get that off? 
just a big, looks like a big, big rubber ring. Oh, and you know what? It's got a, it has a rubber O-ring underneath it. Uh, okay, so these must keep the O-ring in place and then this goes over it. Yeah, so you can see, maybe, hopefully. So there's a, a black rubber O-ring down there and then you've got this piece of, I don't know, I'm assuming it's like a nylon material. So we're gonna have to get those off. There we go, O-ring is off. Put that in the middle there. That way we can know where it goes. Now we just gotta get this nylon piece off, which, there we go, now it's much easier now that the rubber O-ring is out of the way. There we go, all right. Now she is apart, just like that. And now I can go clean up this oily, grimy mess in my bucket, just like I did with the other piece, and we can start reassembling it. And once I start reassembling it, I'm gonna put this stuff in plastic bags so it, the dirt stays off of it. You wanna be really clean when you put it back together. I'll wipe down the rod and everything and uh, kick stuff in my shop. <laughs> You know, so you want to make sure everything's nice and clean and then I'll put everything back together and we'll go put it on the machine and torque everything down and put the rod back in the cylinder and go from there and move on to the next one. Okay, here comes the fun part now. We're going to work on putting this uh, piston back together. I've cleaned, uh, I've cleaned everything and I've just got a little bit of hydraulic fluid that I'm going to coat the unit in just to help slide um, you know slide the the seals and stuff on that way nothing gets caught and ripped uh, so these guys are the easiest ones to put on but we're gonna put these on first they snap in just like that we do the other side here boom just grab a little dip of fluid. And you may or may not have to do this. I'm just precautious so that I don't rip O-rings. Done that in the past on other things. All right, so now the fun part is I've got to figure out which O-ring is the correct size. I think it's this one. Nope. It is one of those guys there. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of hydraulic fluid again and just put it on the o-ring to help it slide on. And now we're gonna go on like this. Alright, there's our o-ring. Now we need to put one of these white shims in or uh, nylon pieces in on each side of the o-ring so there's one there's two all right and then this guy is going to slide right over all that and this is the this is going to be the hard part because it's not really, I don't know why they did it this way because it's, it doesn't stretch very well. And you know what, we may have to, let me take one of these off here real quick. Let's do it this way. Because then I can kind of get it on one side like that, right? And then take our pick, make sure it's clean, and then we can do the same thing and get it over. Just kind of walk it over. Do it 
let's, let's take one of these guys out here. It is not a very stretchy piece. It's just gonna kinda gotta be nice to it. There we go. All right, now that's there. Now we gotta get the this guy back in here. And that will hold the uh, rubber seal in place, so the rubber o-ring. And you can see the o-ring is being bratty, so we'll just take our pick, shove it that way, and there we go. I don't like the fitment of this quite as much as I liked the factory one that was in here. But that is unfortunately what I have. So we'll put this guy back on. There we go. Just trying to get this yellow ring to ride on the O-ring to make sure it seats properly. Using my pick to do that. All right, that should be good. Okay, so now you can see the outside's all back together. Now we've got to do the rings in here. Same thing, just gonna put a little bit of lubricant in there, hydraulic fluid. Um, lube up all the seals that way there is no uh, no chance of ripping anything so this made a sandwich we'll stick this in here and I do have a tool that'll help do this but these seem to be thin enough where I don't really have that issue it doesn't appear there we go Okay, there we go. I got it. Just had to talk to it a little bit. Okay, so now our piston is back together. You can see we've got our rings on the outside. There's an O-ring under this yellow ring here. We've got our O-ring and two nylon spacers, one on each side. So this guy is back together and will be ready to go on to the end of the rod um, to go on this way. The nut, the nut will go on this way. So the last piece we have to do here is rebuild our uh, gland nut, the actual gland itself, which also should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I've got this seal, I've got these O-rings, got this nylon ring here. So these guys can get put to the side. These are all, these are the old ones for the piston. So let's move over to our gland nut here and work on getting that back together. Learned a handful of things from the last time we were here. Um, this is the following weekend. This is my gland nut. We got the piston. This is all. This has all been rebuilt at this point. Um, I ended up ordering a second kit from Bomb Hydraulics because the first kit I got, I was under the impression that this was the supposed to be the rod wiper which you can see it kind of fits in there but it's super loose and the original one was metal and it had rubber in there to fit in there nice and tight like so right 
and I pulled this out and the kit did not have a replacement in it. I assumed it was supposed to be this one because it was similar in size. It was the only one that was similar in size. But obviously that's in there and it's very loose. I also was missing the piece that went in here, or I thought I was, uh, because this was the piece, if you remember in the beginning of the video, I just kind of picked it out and it deteriorated on the bench. I, it didn't come out in one piece. So here's where I was wrong. Um, this piece is what is belonged in here. That's your uh, back backup seal, I think is what they're calling it. And then I ordered these from, I forgot what company I ordered these from. It wasn't Bomb Hydraulics because I talked to Bomb Hydraulics and they told me this piece was on national back order and they couldn't find it. I know the part number for this is MCN-2501. I don't know if this is exactly the right rod wiper. Um, I don't know if it's the original style. It certainly looks like what I pulled out. Uh, it is uh, three inches, the OD is three inches, the ID is two and a half inches, and then the height is a quarter inch. So that's what we were looking for. I did get Bomb Hydraulics gave me the specifications of what I was looking for. So I was able to source this. So this will sit in here like this. This will go in there in this groove down here. And that should pretty much take care of, of what we need to get this back together. Now the other piece that I have to do is I put, I went back and watched some of the video I shot the other day and I put this O-ring on. It is supposed to have this washer in there beforehand. So I've got to pull that O-ring off and put this washer in and put the O-ring back on. And then we're going to use our seal twister kit and I'll put this in and then we're going to press in, we're probably going to press in uh, the rod wiper. Once we do that, I can clean the rod we can slide the gland nut back on so it's like this. We can put the piston back on and put the nut back on and then I can go over to the tractor and torque it down and then slide it back in the, in the cylinder housing. So I got my pick. I'm just gonna pull this O-ring off here. There we go. Put that to the side and then I am going to take just a little bit of hydraulic fluid. And I just put a little bit on it just to help it go on the, the gland nut a little bit without ripping. Just lube it up there, slide it over. Okay, just make sure it's seated properly all the way around. There we go. All right. A little more hydraulic fluid on the O-ring here. Same thing, slide it around. And there we go. So, got the washer and the o-ring right there so the last two pieces i have to do this one's going to be the tricky one um, i'm gonna put a little hydraulic oil in there too just so it seats properly with your twister you want it positioned. this is the first time i've used one of these you want it positioned like this and we're going to position it in the little block they give you now, there is a direction to this seal here. You want the, the lip to go out because your rod's going to go through here and you want it to wipe the oil off as it goes through. So you want that. That's how you want it oriented. Um, so we're going to sit it like this on the twister here. So let's see. Hopefully the camera can pick up on that. That's what it looks like. And... You may have to hold it because it will pop off or could pop off. We're going to take the, the left hand side lever here and we're just going to loop it over. See if I can do this. Like so. And we can take it out of our block here. So it'll look like that. 
and then we're going to stick it in the gland nut in the slot and we're going to let it go. Just like that. Okay. See? It looks like that in there. Sit seated properly. Looks good. So now we can put in our rod wiper. For the rod wiper, um, you probably don't really need the hydraulic fluid around it. I'm just gonna put a little bit just because maybe it'll help it'll slide in a little more and it might keep some of the corrosion off of it. So place it in there. And I don't have a seal installer. It is a tight fit. So what we can do is I'm gonna take it over to my press and I'm gonna press it in. I'm just gonna take a bigger socket and we're just gonna gently press it in. So I just took a big socket. And we're just gonna gently press it in. It needs a whole heck of a lot of pressure on it. Let's release that and see what it looks like. Oh, we'll have to put a little pressure on this side. Um, you really probably want to have a seal installer for this. I did buy two. I did buy a second one just in case I screwed it up. Plus, this is a Harbor Freight special shop press, so it's really not the really most accurate tool for this job. Let's see if we can get it in now. You really want something the same circumference to get this in, but I don't have anything, unfortunately. Let's see if this works here. Let's position it like this. Again, if I damage it, I did buy another one, so not that I want to do that, but there we go. That's better. In there, yeah. You know, could go a little bit more over here, I think. Yeah, you go just a little bit more over there, but you can see it's largely in. This is the seal twister kit I got. Uh, I got it off of Amazon. I don't even know what the part number of it is. Uh, I don't know if that's it. PM eighty-seven eighty-two five. 6980. Um, it's Kit King Seal Twisters tool set. Got a bunch of little odds and ends in there. Got the block to hold it. And it's got a couple of different sizes. I mean, you can get other kits. There are other kits. This is just the one that I happen to pick up. So, um, and I think I, I think I got it used off of Amazon. I'll put that away. And I'm going to clean up our bench here. And then I'm going to take the rod and I'm going to clean the rod itself. We're going to put our gland nut back on. We're going to put our piston back on. We're going to put our nut back on. Um, I won't be able to torque the nut on the end of the rod just yet because it's torqued to like 250 or 300 foot pounds. So I got to pin it on the machine in order to torque it down. We've got our bench clean mostly. I'm going to slide our gland nut over here. I'm going to slide our piston out of the way. Slide our lock nut out of the way here. And I am going to grab another pair of rubber gloves because that is oily and I don't feel like having oily hands tonight. And this thing weighs a ton. And we want to keep everything nice and clean. We can't have any dirt get into the cylinder because you will score it or you'll score the rod which actually doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape considering its age. There is a little bit of war wearing here or fading on the chrome. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. Tip it up. 
using a painter's rag to clean it. I am going to put some hydraulic fluid on each of these seals here so that it slides because you're going to slide it on this way and you don't want it to get caught. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Last night when I was working on this, I made a mistake with the, the gland nut and the seals. So we put that blue seal in. Um, here, let me show you. So I put this blue seal in, right? Well, first of all, this blue seal is actually missing an O-ring in it. Um, so that's one issue. So this is the one from the bomb hydraulics kit. And you can see it's got an O-ring here. Um, secondly, I put it in so that the lip of the seal, so this is the, this is the rod wiper, and the lip is pointing towards uh, the end of the rod. So uh, as the rod comes out, it wipes off the hydraulic fluid. So I put the lip, uh, because this is the seal, and I had nothing else to look at, and the book doesn't really call it out, I put uh, the seal, the bearing seal in the exact same way, figuring for the same reason. However, I couldn't get the rod to go past that seal. Now, a couple of things. First of all, this seal that I got from Bomb Hydraulics looks subtly different. And secondly, uh, from watching online and reading, actually kind of reading and trying to understand what the manual is telling me, they want. So the manual says, install the rod seal, which is this guy into the ID of bearing with lip away from the dust seal. So this would be your dust seal. So that means your, your rod wiper or your dust seal would be facing out this way and that the lip of the seal, and you guys can correct me in the comments, but this is, this is my understanding interpretation of it, is facing towards the pressure side. So install rod seal into ID of bearing with lip of seal away from dust seal. Install dust seal wiper into bearing with lip side of the seal outward. Away from rod seal. Use care to prevent damage to lip, lips of seals during installation. Install backup washer and o-ring into groove onto the outer diameter of bearing. So we already did that. That's moving on to the next step. So. What I need to do is take this blue seal out here and I'm gonna put this one in and I'm gonna put it in this way so that it's towards the, the pressure side, which is what they called for. Before we start, this seal here that I have from Bomb Hydraulics is also made by Halite, H-A-L-L-I-T-E. It has part number 512-88268 and it is Two and a half ID by three OD by three eighths thickness. Okay, so I'm just I just kind of got behind it. I'm gonna fold it and pull it out. And again, you can see this seal, and it's probably the same. It's just this one's missing the O-ring for whatever reason. Um, so we want to put it so it's facing this way. So I'm gonna get my twister tool, and we're gonna put it in, and then we should be able to put it back on the cylinder or the uh, the gland nut. I hope I don't have to take this wiper seal out. I don't think I will. I think I'll be able to get it in without a problem. So again, the O-ring is going to go towards the pressure side. We're going to put it on the twister like this and loop over and hope it doesn't pop off. There we go. That's not what I wanted it to do. Try this again. Okay. 
Um, I should have put a little hydraulic fluid on there. Just to help it slide in. Kind of walk it in there. There we go, perfect. Okay, so that looks much better. That looks like it's what it's supposed to look like there. So this should now go on the rod without too much trouble. So this guy, honestly, you know what? Looking at this, this seal has a big lip on it. The other one does not. So I don't think this is even the right seal. I would, <clears throat> if you're gonna buy these seals, get them from get them from somebody like a bomb hydraulics because I was trying to save a buck and went with a smaller vendor. Um, you get what you pay for. Okay, I got everything cleaned up. We're gonna put a little uh, hydraulic fluid here on the um, rod just to help it help the nut slide down. I'm gonna put a little in here as well. Wipe it around with my fingers. Just to get it started. There we go. All right. So now this is gonna slide on this way. And it should go on much easier than last night. There we go. Okay, so there we go, there's our gland nut. And we're sliding that on there. And then now we can do the same that we can put our piston on. I've already got this pretty covered in hydraulic fluid just because I you know, was trying to protect it a little bit. And I've already put it back together. And now we can put it on to the um, we can put it on to the end of the um, the rod, so it'll slide on like that. There we go. Now again, I already had some hydraulic fluid on there, but I want to put a little more. Just didn't like how tight that was on the going on. There we go. Slide this on. There we go, that feels better. And now we can put our lock nut on here. And then we'll take it over to the machine. I'm just gonna lightly uh, you know, we're going to put it down and snug it a little bit as best as I can on the bench. Um, but we're going to have to uh, take it over the machine and pin it down, pin it to, pin this end of the rod to the machine, torque this nut down, then we can slide the whole thing back into the, uh, to the cylinder housing and put it back together. So this lock nut, this lock nut is two and nine sixteenths. It's a big socket. I mean, you can see the size of it. It's absolutely massive. Ratchet is also massive. It is three-quarter drive. Let's see if I can just run this down. Again, I'm gonna see how far we can get it down without Down with my impact. I just want to get it on there so it doesn't come apart. There we go, now it's started. So I have my rod set up on the back over here. Um, I pinned it at the end. I got my nut on it. Um, I unfortunately couldn't find the exact torque specs in the book. Uh, I'm gonna torque it to probably about 250 foot-pounds because I found similar 
uh, cylinders in the book that reference that. Um, so I don't have anything on my bench to clamp it to get it to that torque spec. So I'm going to do it here on the machine. I have a rag just to protect. You don't want to score your rod or damage your rod at all. Um, so I'm going to take my torque wrench and we're going to tighten it. I'm going to start with 150 foot pounds and see how it feels and go from there. Okay, well it's already there. And it could be that my Milwaukee tightened it enough. We're gonna go up to 200 foot-pounds. Good there. We'll go up to 250 and that is about where I'm gonna call it good. Okay, so I think we should be good there. I'm comfortable with that. Undo our torque wrench. We don't want to leave any tension on it. And then I gotta go get my hydraulic fluid. So we're gonna, I'm gonna unpin it. I'm gonna put hydraulic fluid around here and around here. I've already cleaned out the uh, cylinder housing. We're gonna slide it in and then on these cylinders, this one didn't have it, it was missing it. There's, and I couldn't find one. There's supposed to be a lock ring to kind of hold this in place. Uh, like I said, this machine, I didn't have it on this cylinder and I couldn't find a replacement. So um, we're gonna put this back together. I'm just gonna take a little bit of hydraulic fluid from my bucket here, clean, brand new, and spread it over my seals here. you don't want anything tearing as you slide it into the housing. So I'm just gonna, oops, that caught my glove there. This rod is very heavy. So if you have a buddy, it would be helpful. Um, we want it so the Zerk fitting faces up. So I'm just gonna take our pin out here There we go. And we're gonna spin it around like so. Helps if you take a little pressure off the end when you wiggle it in, like so. And you may wanna put a little more hydraulic fluid on there. She's back into place. Um, so you can get your gland nut screwed in. There we go, gland nut's back in, rod's back in, and we can hook it back up to the backhoe. I will work on snugging this down. Uh, normally you would put a crescent wrench on this and I might be able to, I'll have to go see if I can find one. Um, they, uh, the gland nut is pretty worn. So a lot of the uh, spots where you would grab onto it are chewed up. So kind of tough to do. Uh, so I'll do that. And then this cylinder is back together and we can move on to the next one. This morning we got our bucket cylinder put back together for our uh, fit Massey Ferguson 54A backhoe attachment on our Massey Ferguson 40B tractor. Uh, hopefully that helps some of you guys out. There's not a lot of information on this machine out there. I have the service manual, but it's so-so as to what it tells you. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of pictures. It doesn't give you a lot of things to go by. And this cylinder, like the, the seals and the gland nut were so worn, as you saw earlier in the video, um, they were 
so warm, like I couldn't eat, I had nothing to compare them to and nothing to uh, look at to see, you know, when I put it back together. So uh, I took as much, pic took as many pictures and video as I could as I took it apart so that I could go back and reference it later on. Uh, but it is, you know, it was, it was tough to kind of, that, that gland nut with those seals in there, uh, it was tough to figure out which direction things went. And I, ha I spent a lot of time researching and reading and looking at other videos and pictures uh, to determine how I should best put that back together. Um, that being said, hopefully I get it back together and it doesn't leak. I've got a bunch of other cylinders we've got to do before I can even test this. Uh, but at least gives you, if you're working on a machine like this, gives you some insight into what's inside of this cylinder and how it's put together. So, like I said in, earlier in the video, this is the first time I've done this. I've got a few more to go. Um, I kind of learned a lot about hydraulics and seals and where to find seals and how to measure seals. So this was a learning experience. I had to buy a bunch of tools to be able to do this. Um, like I said earlier in the video, I had to buy, I bought an impact gun, I bought a big torque wrench, I bought some big sockets because the piston lock nut is two and nine sixteenths. It is a big, big socket or big nut. And I didn't have anything in my arsenal quite that size. So I spent some time and money buying tools uh, to be able to do this and teach myself how to do it and watching a lot of other YouTube videos. So hopefully it comes up, hopefully it doesn't leak. Uh, at least gives you an idea of what's involved in it for this particular machine and maybe some places to look for seals and parts for it. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe below, and uh, feel free to leave your comments as well. If I did something wrong, I'm sure you guys will let me know. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.